Welcome to day 5 of the Remotion 4.0 launch week. This is the final video, but we're going to go through all the noteworthy new features in Remotion 4.0. And we're going to start with a little bit of an offshoot side project. Remotion can now generate WebP images and PDFs. So this made me think, let's have a look at how well we can generate some documents in Remotion. So I defined this little sort schema, which takes some invoice line items. And then I render a document with our logo in the top left, map over the line items, and then sum it up in a grand total. I registered the schema in the root file and opened the Remotion project. And now I have an invoice template that I can fill out on the right hand side. So I can give these line items some descriptions and uh, set the price using this slider. Also add more line items if I need to and set the currency. Once I am happy with my invoice, I can click the render button, select PDF as output format and render my invoice. And this is how it looks like, like a normal boring PDF. You can of course also edit the props directly in the code or pass an override when you render the PDF on the command line via the Node.js API on Remotion Lambda and in the Remotion Cloud Run Alpha. To any render, you can pass the log equals verbose flag to see the console.logs that you have put in your project alongside some other useful debug information. And in Remotion 4.0, this verbose logger has been vastly improved. It does not interlace with the progress bars anymore and the console.logs get formatted like in the Chrome DevTools and have their location on the left of it. Let's take one last look at how it looked before with noise from Google Chrome, with interlacing progress bars and console.logs without the actual source location. And let's say goodbye to this mess. Starting with Remotion 4.0, you never have to worry again about installing FFmpeg and also not about installing the right version of FFmpeg because this could also be a stone to step over. Rather, every Remotion project ships with its own tiny version of FFmpeg, which you can actually find in your node modules in the add Remotion folder. Then you have a platform specific compositor package, and in there are all the files that you need for FFmpeg. And on macOS, this is just 10 megabytes. Whereas previously it could take up up to 150 megabytes. In addition to that, FFmpeg can also be used by our Rust compositor binary, which in my case is just 1.2 megabytes. You don't need FFmpeg anymore, but if you find yourself in a situation where it might be useful, then we ship the Remotion FFmpeg CLI command which works just like normal FFmpeg. It just has stripped a lot of codecs that are ancient, essentially. And um, there's also the ffprobe command, which in case you don't know, is very useful if you want to get information about a video. So for example, if you have a video file, which has no file extension, or you suspect it has the wrong file extension, you can run ffprobe over it, and then you get all kind of information um, from this outputs. You get the duration and the codec. So this new architecture, of course, makes the off-thread video component much faster since Rust can use the ffmpeg C API. This is hard to show because it should be completely invisible, but we have this repository which features a comparison and uh, we claim that it's twice as fast, but in this benchmark, the performance gain is even better. And in Remotion Lambda, we shaved off over 100 megabyte of the Lambda runtime, so your Lambda renders will now start even faster. 
when doing server-side rendering, you would often find yourself doing this, getting a list of compositions using get composition, then finding the composition with the ID that you want to render in an array. But since dot find might also return undefined, you would also add in a null check in there. So it is a little bit of a dance that you have to make. So in Remotion 4.0, you just need to call the select composition function and pass in the ID that you want to get. And the function will throw if the composition does not exist. So you can shorten your code a bit. And the other benefit is now that each composition can have a calculate metadata function. If you use the select composition API, then only the calculate metadata function of that composition will be called. Whereas if you keep using get compositions, then every calculate metadata function is being called. So whenever possible, prefer the new select composition API. We have updated all templates to 4.0, and we have also introduced two new templates. One is the popular Stargazer project by Rodrigo Pombo. And the other one is a clone of the text-to-speech template. But instead of Azure, it uses Google services. And what's cool about this is that it uses visual editing. So we can enter any text. And the duration of the synthesized voice will automatically be uh, used as the duration of the video. And as you can see, we can use all kinds of parameters. We can choose between different voices, different pitches to kind of generate a playground from the get-go. And we have not only applied this to the Google template, but also to the Azure template. To round it off, here are two tiny enhancements to the development workflow. So when you start the studio server, we print the URL at where it is being hosted. But once you have a lot of other um, fast refreshes or renders in the terminal, you kind of lose this and you have to scroll up a lot and maybe you have already cleared the terminal. So now if you are closing the browser window of the Remotion Studio, we wait a tiny bit to ensure that you are not just reloading it. And then we print the URL again so that you can open it right away. And it has opened in here. And also, there's this little button at the top of the Remotion Studio, which allows you to open your project in VS Code or in your other default editor right from the Remotion Studio. Thanks a lot for watching the Remotion 4.0 launch week. All of these videos are also available on our brand new Remotion YouTube channel, and we are continuing to upload useful content there in the future. So please consider a subscription to our YouTube channel to help us get started. And then I hope to see you soon for another video.